Okay, we're here at HP Discover 2012. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's uh, coverage of HP Discover. Wall to wall, we're here for three days. Uh, getting all the stories, finding out who's got what going on, talking to the smartest people we can find, extracting the signal from the noise and sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host for this segment, Stu Miniman. Stu, uh, great to see you covering for me yesterday inside theCUBE, appreciate it. Uh, another good day we got going on today. Thanks, John. Uh, great to have you back here, and uh, lots of excitement here for the next two days at HP Discover, and I'm happy to introduce uh, Nick Ilyadis, who's uh, with Broadcom, uh, excellent partner of HP's, and he's the CTO of the Infrastructure Networking Group. Uh, for people that aren't too familiar with Broadcom, they're uh, really a lot of the components inside lots of the different pieces, very broad portfolio. Uh, Nick touches you know, the, the switches, the adapters, uh, lots of different pieces here, and so, Nick, welcome on theCUBE. Oh, thank you, Stu, thank you, John. Nick, it's a pleasure to be here. Nick, you know, the, a lot of the infrastructure players like Broadcom and, and others, they're, they're powering all that, and that's really why we love theCUBE, because we get to talk to the people who are making all the great stuff happen, and people know the brand names like Intel, and obviously, uh, obviously they've had a huge marketing budget over the years and have done great work, uh, but you guys are in the news today, Broadcom, uh, big time announcement uh, about the 5G Wi-Fi. So, uh, congratulations. Oh, uh, this is a real testament to you guys' leadership, and uh, it's great to see uh, Broadcom kind of being highlighted uh, as uh, in the gaming laptop. You guys just announced that that, uh, that product for. So, what can you tell us a little bit about that? I know Certainly, it's a different yeah. group, but Broadcom as a company has great yeah, leadership. Yeah, um, so, uh, the, we're calling this 5G. So, this is the 802.11ac. Uh, uh, it's not a standard yet; it's a draft standard. Uh, we announced uh, the access point uh, solution back in March at uh, Mobile World Congress, and now we've uh, announced the client side. So to actually take advantage of the 5G, you need to have both sides of the connection. So uh, there was companies shipping our access point solution today, and now we're going to enable uh, laptops with the uh, client side as well. So now you have a true you know, gigabit uh, plus connection between a laptop and an access point. So it's really going to enable high-speed uh, networking. Just in, in the keynotes here, we're, and we're hearing from Meg Whitman all the way down to even Intel is on stage today talking about uh, big data, and big data is now hugely popular right, for everyone's uh, agenda. And all, all the innovations happening around storage, obviously at the center of that, but uh, at the network and all the device sides, uh, there really needs to be this kind of innovation. This is just one example of the leadership. Can you just share uh, what Broadcom's doing right now under the covers that's really kind of empowering this, you know, mobility and social networking and, you know, the cloud, the cloud mobile sure. and social, which is the, you know, the hottest trends right now. At, at the uh, nexus of all this is a data center, right? And the data center has to be uh, scalable and have performance. And today's uh, Broadcom is supplying uh, adapters, NICs, controllers for the server infrastructure, as well as the high capacity switching infrastructure. These would be the top rack switches, the end of row switches. The silicon that goes into all those products is today, you know, Broadcom is a leader in providing those solutions to our customers, the OEMs like uh, HP. Uh, in particular, at, uh, with HP, with the Gen 8 uh, server release, we are, um, we had five ad adapters go out in March, and then we have three more that were announced here at the show. This is both 10 gigabit and one gigabit. Uh, very high performance uh, in terms of a, a CNA. We're 265% faster than our nearest competition uh, that was been benchmarked by the uh, MarTech. And um, that's on uh, multiple threads running simultaneously. And then just on pure throughput, we're 37% faster than our nearest competitor. So that's the kind of performance you need to be able to run these social apps, to be able to get the big data in and out of the servers in these uh, next generation data centers. Okay, so so so, so Nick, uh, you know, first Dennis Martin, uh, he's actually uh, w one of the original Wikibon contributors. Okay. Great to see his uh, his research being used. If you go to wikibon.org, you, you can find that. Uh, so you know, I mean, I, I remember Broadcom really is you know the, the leader in the law market space, the land on motherboard, and we've seen uh, a, a really a sea shift as you go to 10 gig. It used to be this you know solder down on the motherboard, you, you get the design win, and you win. Uh, y you win everything mm -hmm. after that, but if you look at, with 10 gig, uh, there's more flexibility. Um, vendors like HP is, I, I can choose from multiple vendors, so you know, how, are, uh, how are HP, who is your customer, and how are the end users making their choices on this next generation of adapter? So the, the flexible ARM is what uh, HP is calling it, yep. is uh, basically you get, that get to choose the networking adapter if, when you configure the system. And Broadcom wants to be recognized for having the most complete software solution, time-tested. We've been shipping uh, NICs now for over 10 years, so there's, there's a lot of history there in quality and stability. 
we have the highest performance, so our customers can recognize that when they use a Broadcom controller in the system, they're getting the highest performance uh, NIC that is available. And then the feature uh, uh, cap capabilities. Because of our architecture, we can provide uh, features on existing hardware through software upgrades. So we have this ability, because of our programmable uh, controller, to add functionality as new standards uh, uh, come out or new capabilities, let's say like new virtualization protocols. These are the um, VXLAN, NVGRE, and L2GRE. As those come to the forefront, our controller has the ability to be upgraded in the field through a software upgrade to take advantage of those new protocols when HP embraces them in, in their, uh, their products. So in, in the case of the users, I believe they, they should look at a Broadcom NIC as an investment protection because it allows them to future-proof their servers going forward. And then all the, the features and functionality give them best of class performance. Nick, we've been hearing themes on theCUBE all, all year now, and just recently, uh, here and early on in our summer tour, that um, really there's two key themes around cloud, mobile, and big data, and all those, uh, you know, the four, we call the four horsemen of IT disruption. That's performance mm -hmm. and integration, and that translates to solutions. What are you guys doing with HP? Can you talk about some of those specific points uh, with regard to your HP relationship and yep. around performance and some of the integration that has to go on because these solution sets are becoming more complex. Just uh, past two days, we were at the IBM Edge event in, in uh, New York City. They've completely transformed their, their business model around storage, not as a silo, but as a full integrated portfolio. Uh, that seems to be the trend. Can you shed some light on what you guys are doing with HP specifically? Certainly. Um, so we're part of the proactive insight architecture uh, platform, the PIA. So this is an umbrella that uh, HP has with their vendors to, to allow that, that you know, devices will interoperate as part of a system and allow uh, visibility into performance and, and faults through their, their architecture. So working within the PIA, Broadcom ensures that our products play within the system as a component that's well integrated. So that's what the, the first aspect of, of it. We've, you know, we've had a very long relationship with HP going back many, many years. So it's not like we're just coming in and, and, and putting a product on the table and having them ship it. We have had a, a working relationship with them. We've been working on solutions with them. The, the, the most prominent one is Flex 10. So Flex 10 was co-developed with Broadcom and HP, and we continue to support it today. That gives them flexibility to be able to reconfigure their Blade servers in, in different ways using this Flex 10 technology. So by being a partner to HP versus just a, a vendor, we are able to work on solutions together that are uh, cohesive, well-tested, and future-proof. So, so Nick, uh, the, the other big area that you're partnered with HP is uh, on the switching. Uh, right. Broadcom's one of the leaders in merchant silicon. Uh, you know, every year we, we go to Interop these days, you can see all the OEMs that Broadcom has there, uh, and, and HP is a strong one of those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Dave Donatelli in his keynote this morning was talking about HP trying to transform networking. Things like SDN, we're going to have Sargali yep. uh, on uh, later today to talk about that. So, can you speak a little bit about uh, you know your your relationship on the switch side and, and where you see that market going? Correct. So SDN and people also refer to this as OpenFlow. I think OpenFlow is well, one. I think OpenFlow is like one, one instance, option, one correct. component of, yep. of, of SDN. And, yeah. And uh, and Broadcom was the early developer of platforms that, that ran OpenFlow, but but SDN in general. Um, my view on SDN is that. SDN allows you to treat the network like a programmable platform. So no longer are you going out and trying to configure a box or a switch for a particular set of attributes or push policy to it. Now you treat the network as a, a platform that you then are able to configure and able, able to run applications on top of. So let's say, one example I like to use is, let's say you have an energy monitoring application whose job is to go out and, and, and run a, across all the switches in this SDN framework and monitor their, their energy usage, their traffic, and then based upon the, say, traffic profile, say, I'm going to shut down this part of the network because there's, there's low traffic. I'm going to move the workloads from one virtual machine instance to another and, let's say, move the, tra the, the, the VMs to, let's say, this cluster of servers, shut down the switches here and, and sh turn down the servers over here and now be able to have an energy savings by just monitoring how the network and the servers are running and treating that as a platform versus trying to look at individual boxes and making decisions at that level. So, so a, a big portion of transforming the network is, is really we need to, you know, get off the CLI and really automate this environment. Um, being the underlying chip in a lot of these switches, do you, do you have hooks into that, or what, what's what, what's Broadcom's uh, angle on that? We do have actually we have hooks into that. We're also a leader in what's called energy efficient networking, or and, and one aspect of that is called energy efficient Ethernet. 
and we actually worked on a, on a white paper with you guys on uh, developing this uh, technology. So it's uh, um, it's, it's very uh, uh, important. The ability to uh, power down interfaces when they're not active is, is a key component of this. So now that the network becomes load power uh, um, coupled, meaning that as the traffic comes down, the, the power usage of the network goes down as well. So the, the energy efficient networking really turns down the power usage based upon load. So now as, if you have busy periods, you're obviously using more power, but if there's like idle periods, the, the, the equipment actually goes into a lower power state and, and saves energy inside the network. Right, and a big piece of that is this is all automated. Yeah. This isn't, uh, you know, no longer the admin going in and having yeah. to tweak all these knobs and everything like Correct. that. Correct, it's done through, through a set of APIs that c then can be exploited through SDN. Okay, great. So, uh, you, you know, what what else uh, are, are you guys looking at? So Trident Plus, uh, you know, is it kind of the next generation. Right. I hear things like Trill, uh, you know, are, are the other things people Trill, are talking yeah. about. So, you know, what what can people expect to see coming forward from uh, some of the Broadcom chips and the switches that they enable? So, we, we, we tend to call this area the data center fabric. And uh, Trident 2 is, is uh, 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 Trident Plus, excuse me, is the, uh, the, the name of our code name of our latest uh, 64 port 10 gig switch. And that, device is predominantly used in top of rack or under row configurations. Um, that supports Trill and, and other uh, multi-path protocols. So now you can build these large data center fabrics that are multi-path, so you have high cross-sectional bandwidth that allows a lot of the uh, web and social media applications to have uh, they have what's called you know cross-server communication. So there's having this cross-sectional bandwidth available so that the, the applications can communicate with each other horizontally is very important. And then this also gives you redundancy and, uh, and failover protection because you have multiple paths that are, that are active and if one of them fails, you don't lose the network. Okay, and, uh, and, and along those lines, you know, where are we with 40 and 100 gig ethernet? So where we are today with 40 is becoming mainstream. You know, today because of the economics of 10 gig, 40 is really four times 10 gig and then you get some packaging and, uh, you know, um, density uh, uh, improvements with it. So actually 40 gig, on a per gigabit basis is becoming more competitive than 10 gig if you want that, that capability. And 40 gig ports a day, you can actually de deploy them as either four by 10 or one by 40. 100 gig is now starting to become more um, accepted in the forefront and, and we're working with the IEEE to standardize some next generation 100 gig technology that's based on four by 25 gig and drive the, the, the cost of the optics down to, to be much more competitive with 10 gigabit ethernet. So now you can actually see the backbone of these next generation data centers moving to 100 gigabit because it's going to be cost competitive. Nick, I want to ask you uh, a couple questions, just kind of level up a little bit because of your unique position at the company and, and with the data center, uh, all the action in the data yep. center, it's really transforming. Uh, we've been covering HP for uh, over a couple of years now. We've seen Gen 8, we've seen um, uh, the Project Moonshot, a lot of the stuff that they're doing at the server level, the chip level has been pretty fantastic. And there's always the power issues and, and cooling. Um, what would you say to the folks out there? Share with them your perspective on you know, the bottom line of what's happening. Because every vendor's got, it seems to have a different approach. Uh, you're seeing HP do some things, you're seeing uh, IBM do some things, EMC doing some things with storage. Everyone's got kind of this different approach around performance and, and integration. Tell the folks out there what really matters. What are the three things that really matter right now when you talk about you know, having that next generation server, that next generation uh, networking and storage infrastructure as it all kind of converges right. in. I mean, it's a, it's a half a trillion dollar market opportunity in this converged infrastructure. What are the top three things that really matter? So, uh, as a semiconductor vendor that sells into all these uh, different uh, OEMs and our, we are a foundation for their products. So you have to have a strong foundation. So the, the, the idea here is you want to have the highest performance underlying silicon that's very flexible because this is a dynamic marketplace today. There's new protocols being developed, new applications being developed, and you want to make sure you have a foundation that is scalable and can be built upon with, with software. So our customers take our, our base silicon and they build their, their systems around it, they lay, overlay their software on top of that, and they rely on our devices to, to provide high performance and flexibility. The, the other aspect of this is energy efficiency. If we need today, you know, these massive data centers that are becoming the utility computing engines of the future need to be very energy efficient. So you know, by moving to the latest process technologies and putting in things like this energy efficient ethernet, allowing the components to actually scale power with usage is a very important aspect. And, and finally is you know, cost competitiveness. You know, providing a cost effective solution 
because you know when you when you're building out data centers that are large in nature, you know it's it's a it's a big multiplier. So providing a very cost-effective solution as that foundation is very important to our customers. So now, out in out in the world of the big data, storage, um, flash memory, a lot of new things really mm -hmm. increasing. We can put cores everywhere now, uh, and Intel's out totally pumped about that. Um, the finger pointing continues to go to the network, right? So what would you share about the network innovations that are happening because uh, data being moving around the network, people saying the network's now the bottleneck. Yep. One, do you believe that to be true? Uh, and your news today with the 5G computer really kind of shows there's really advancements there. So how do you address that? What, how, do you, what do, how do we just talk about that? Is the network truly the bottleneck? Is the open flow and like initiative, you got Nasira out there doing mm -hmm. some things. Um, you got the software, you mentioned software's kind of playing a big role yeah. in it. Talk about that. So the, the network, I don't believe is a bottleneck. I think there's there's plenty of network performance at the at, at throughput level. What I believe has to happen is the network has to become more application aware, so that you know the, the appropriate prioritization and and flows are are um, sent through the network with the with the optimal urgency. And you know we're working on technologies today. You know we have this what we call App IQ technologies, the ability to actually recognize what application is running on a particular. Uh, flow versus just looking at the IP address or the MAC address. So now the network can become application aware and be able to prioritize traffic based upon what's running there and give the, the network administrator visibility into what's running in their network and understand what things may actually be hogging the network, right? So, that's so what's that's the hottest right. area right now around this area? You know, I mean, it's a good debate and it's kind of not really that critical, but there be, people are doing some new things. What's the hottest area within that network? And, uh, oh, virtualization is, is very key here. So the ability to segment the data center network into sub-networks that are tenant you know, specific or workload specific is, is very important. And having an infrastructure from the controller to the NIC through the switch that is aware of what the virtualized entity is, the VM, and be able to, to transport that traffic both inside the data center and intra data center. So you're now able to you know, tie data centers together and, and have virtualized connections between them, or in the hybrid model where you have an enterprise that wants to uh, you know, do a hybrid model that, that puts some of its compute resources in a cloud, some of it in-house, and then tie those together using this virtualization so that inside the, the hosted data center, it's their own domain. Okay, Nick is the CTO of Infrastructure and Networking at Broadcom. Uh, thanks for sharing uh, your knowledge with us and giving us your perspective. Great to see Broadcom in the news uh, innovating with the gaming laptop and the 5G uh, the, uh, networking. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest from HP Discover right after this short break. Thank you, guys.